what, you may ask, is the application of these talents to the life of the common man? For the answer, let us call upon a common man. Well, now, I'm a common man, all right. I got to go along with that because I am one common man, and you can't hardly get them no more. <laughs> now then, before I tell you about the electronic brain, I'd like to do the right thing here on this Diamond Jubilee. And as you all know, Thomas Edison invented the electric light bulb about 75 years ago. And I think it was very nice of him because now young lovers all over the world can turn them out at the proper moment. <laughs> and they know the... See? And on, uh, on behalf of young lovers everywhere, I would like to do this. Happy birthday, dear light bulb. Happy birthday to you. Now, oh, I'm George Goble. And uh, I just thought, uh, I thought I would mention the name so you didn't confuse me with Gable. And uh, you'd be surprised how many people don't. And uh, that brings us to this here now electronic brain. Now this is a wiring diagram for the electronic brain. Sure it is. Now this, uh, see the electronic brain was invented by a scientist who, uh, who really started out to build a better mousetrap because he wanted to catch better mice. See? And uh, before that he had done considerable research on atomic energy. In fact, he was the man who discovered that a common ordinary household pressure cooker in the hands of a proper child can wipe out an entire neighborhood. <laughs> figured that out, and that brings us back to the electronic brain. <laughs> now, uh, sort of makes a fellow stop and think. <laughs> to look at a thing like this and realize the wonderful thing that scientists have done since Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Now, just imagine if the string on old Ben's kite had broken, today we'd all be watching TV by candlelight. <laughs> or we would. Uh, that brings us back again to the electronic brain. Now, uh, isn't this interesting, really? You know that it took 700 trained engineers, 2,600,000 man hours, just to draw this diagram. And they worked in complete secrecy. There wasn't a one of them that knew what they were doing. I'm with them. Now, see, the reason that I have been asked to explain this electronic brain is because the, the education I have in the field of elect... Uh, or, I mean, I know so much about the intric... Uh, well, see, I'm able to put into technical terms or take technical terms and... Uh, well, I work cheap. <laughs> which brings us back to the electronic brain. Now, now, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm going to stand up here and try to baffle you with a lot of technological terminology. Oh, no. <laughs> because, uh, see, I'm, uh, I'm really just a common man. I'm about as common as you can get and stay sober. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't have any fancy college degrees or anything like that, which is primarily due to the fact that I didn't finish college. They, uh, in my sophomore year, they threw me out on account of my memory. It was bad. I couldn't remember all the words to the Whiff and Poof song. And there's no way you're going to get through. And I try real hard. You know, I'd be singing along real good, and I'd get all the way up to Whiffin and Poof. My mind would just go blank. And it wasn't that I was a bad student, now, you understand, because it was more that I was a, uh, well, you might say an indifferent student. That's what I called me an indifferent student. The professors called me stupid. <laughs> hey, stupid, they used to say. What makes you think you're indifferent? <laughs> and uh, the thing was, the thing was they kept teaching me things that I didn't know anything about. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's not right. You know that. <laughs> 
you know that. Everybody knows that. I'm a nymph. Now, some people claim that this teaching you something you don't know about is the whole idea of college, but not to me, because to me, college was just a warm place to hang out between high school and a hasty marriage. So there you are. And here I am, and here's the brain. Now, what will they think of next, do you suppose? What, whatever it is, I hope they don't ask me to talk about it. <laughs> say. You know, this machine is the only one of its kind in, capt not in, in the world. I mean, it's the only one that they built, and it covers an area of uh, 36,000 square feet, cost $96 million to build, slightly higher west of the Rockies. <laughs> and so far, it hasn't done a lick of practical work. And I'll tell you why, because so far they haven't figured out what union it'll have to join. <laughs> and you can't turn a crank until you get that figured out. I mean, you know. Now, uh, this, this part I find interesting. Do you, you find this part interesting? <laughs> I find this very interesting. I find, oh, I can't find it right now, but I have it. <laughs> now, this whole area here is interesting because it contains a silicon rectifier, the electrostatic deflection oscillograph, a superheterodyne converter, and some wire from a cheap coat hanger. <laughs> and that's only the beginning. Now, let's look at this part right here. This next part right in here, this contains the schematic rectifier circuit of the thermionic diode. And they're the best kind. <laughs> and a little further up, this area in here, this illustrates the cathode, anode, load resistor, filter capacitor, and the route of the new freeway through downtown Teaneck, New Jersey. <laughs> And I want to tell you this now, someday every man, woman, and wealthy child will have one of these electronic brains. That is everyone except my uncle. And he's stubborn. He's working on his own invention. He's, he's trying to perfect rubber shoelaces for fat people. <laughs> See, what you do is you tie them up here and they just snap back into place. <laughs> I didn't come up here to be made sport of. <laughs> this section, this section in here really fascinates me, mostly because it contains the rheostats, condensers, and oscillators. And I think they're nice. <laughs> of course, there's one important thing that not any of this, not one single bit of this whole complex mechanism will do anything if some clown forgets to plug it in. <laughs> But that's like anything else. I mean, like we've got an electric blanket at home and if you, uh, it works great if, uh, see what you do is you plug it into the wall and in five minutes, the wall is just as warm as cold. <laughs> now we've got this little home out in the San Fernando Valley. It's out in the smog free area. And the man who sold us the place said it was in the smog free area. And he's right because it is in the smog free area. I'll say that. You know, every day, just as regular as clockwork, the smog rolls in, but we don't pay a penny for it. <laughs> we, don't, uh, we don't pay penny one. <laughs> we, pay for our, uh, we pay for our electricity, you know, and we pay for our water, but we just don't pay for the smog, and we do that on purpose. And I'll tell you why, because we figure if we don't pay for the smog, Maybe they'll come out and turn it off. <laughs> but so far, they haven't. In fact, we don't even know who's in charge of the operation. <laughs> but that brings us back to the electronic brain. Now, uh, I bet when I started out here, a lot of you people thought I wasn't going to be very bright. And you know, a lot of people couldn't even begin to explain this machine to you. Now, uh, see if... Uh, well, so much for the operation. Thing. I think the thing that uh, people might well ask is, how does this complex machine affect our daily lives? Now, there's a question. And let's see, it can do anything. Like, for instance, like the other fellow said, what does it do for the Bureau of Internal Revenue? 
Well, you fill out your tax form, they feed it into the brain, they twist a few dials, push a few buttons, turn on a couple of faucets, and before you can say Alcatraz, you're on your way. <laughs> now it can, uh, it can sew stitches, dig ditches, fix britches, tie hitches, and count riches. It can uh, boom hairs, shoot bears, cut squares, make chairs, and take dares. And it can count things, crown kings, polish rings, catch slings, and locate pings. And it also can polish shoes, make booze, cook meals, grease wheels, launch boats, puff oats, teach fencing, go dancing. <laughs> can mix a perfect martini while refereeing a tennis match, which is an important social asset if you care for that sort of thing, of course. Oh, I tell you, this machine, it's uh, just... Uh... Now, if you would like more information about the brain, and that's understandable, if you do, you can write to me and enclose a stamped envelope, but be sure to enclose a stamp. Because while I can't answer your questions, I do save stamps. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, write to me in care of this station. In just a moment, they're going to tell you what station this is. And while we pause for station identification, I think it would be a nice gesture of appreciation to the electric industries if everybody all over America turns on every light and appliance in the house. Now just go right ahead. Switch on everything. Get it all lit up and working. Every switch and dial and button all over the place. Now, that will not only be a glorious salute to Light's Diamond Jubilee, but it'll also run up your electric bill and help pay for this show. <laughs> now then, let's everybody get all set for station identification. I can't hardly wait. Now, is everybody all set already? Will somebody please tell them what station this is? Sure we will. <laughs> 